Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So this is the the time sequence uh, that we would like to discuss. This is the global temperature of the uh, global surface temperature of the Earth, and so I believe that most of you are aware of it. So what we see here is uh, an increase of temperature uh, in uh, of about one Celsius degree, a little bit less than one Celsius degree since uh, 1850. This is the global warming, and uh, here you see the uh, the output of the climate models. Uh, of the IPCC, that are CMIP5, these are the models used uh, recently. And uh, uh, we would like to discuss about the properties of this signal. Of course, uh, if you compare the two, you see that both signals uh, produce some kind of warming, so the model more or less produces this warming, but the models fail to produce all oscillations that you see here. You see that there is no comparison whatsoever between the data and the models. So the problem is, are the oscillations important for understanding climate change or not? One. Two, what is the origin of this oscillation? Okay? Because uh, if the models do not reproduce the natural oscillation of the climate, it might happen that the models are missing something very, very important uh, ingredient for interpreting climate change. Okay? So please change. Now, briefly, uh, what is the problem of climate change? I think that you have heard about this uh, two Celsius degree limit. Uh, by Essentially, the, the problem is that if the temperature will warm more than two Celsius by 2010, uh, by um, 2100, okay, so many regions of the Earth will have problems. Okay, so people say we need to keep the temperature below a, a, a warming of 2 Celsius. And to do this, uh, we need to reduce the greenhouse gases because the models uh, predict that the temperature will go above the 2 Celsius limit. Okay, so that is all what you are about. The problem is that if there are natural oscillations and, uh, and the temperature will, uh, be, will remain below the 2 Celsius limit because of the natural oscillation of the system, then we may not need to, to reduce too much uh, the, our emissions. So the economical problems will be very different. Okay? So the problem of oscillations, understanding the oscillation of the climate system is very, very important. Please. Another issue, and now I finish this introduction, is that be careful when we talk about global impacts of climate change, because not all regions of the Earth are affected in the same way. In North Europe, in general in Europe, in particular in North Europe, a warming would be beneficial. Okay? Other regions of the Earth, like in India or in Peru, other regions in Africa, the warming would be uh, dangerous. But uh, so when we talk about the danger of global warming, it depends on the region where we are. Okay? So that is another issue that we need to consider. It's not that everybody will suffer. There is some geographical uh, distribution of the uh, um, uh, problems. OK, let's go ahead. And let us understand how climate models work. Climate models essentially uh, use uh, a set of equations of the circulation plus a forcing, a set of forcing uh, that uh, are responsible of the change of the climate. Here you see many, many forcing uh, from solar, uh, CO2, uh, many other volcanic, and so on. Solar actually is very, very small, these yellow things that is here. So the claim is that uh, um, the natural forcing, so volcano and the solar, is relatively small and the warming is entirely, nearly entirely produced by this uh, greenhouse effect uh, of, uh, that is believed to be anthropogenic. The problem with the climate is that uh, an important issue is how much sensitive is the climate to, it, to the greenhouse gases. And uh, here you see several authors with the error bars of this estimate of the equilibrium climate sensitivity. You see that the model IPCC are here between 1.5 and 4.5, but uh, there is no agreement between the authors. So I believe that the uh, climate sensitivity is about 1 and 2, more or less 1 and 2. 
uh, and uh, if with this climate sensitivity to greenhouse gases, uh, there will be no big problem uh, with greenhouse gas, as we will show later. Go ahead, please. Models have other problems. So for example, they fail in reconstructing the temperature during the Holocene. So this is the model, model prediction. These are the data. They fail in reconstructing the troposphere temperature. The models are here. The observations are here. They fail to reconstruct the temperature at the poles. So you see that the temperature of the, of, of the so this is the ice cover, the sea ice cover, so North Pole went down but the South Pole went up and uh, that but the models predict in both cases a warming so uh, it, it, they don't explain uh, the the, uh, the increase of ice cover in the in the in the in the South Pole okay so there are many problems uh, and if we go back uh, during the last 1,000 years so the, the models have other problems so we know the temperature during the Middle Age was like this then went down down here and then went up again here. The models produce this kind of curve. This is this uh, uh, this curve here. So it apparently reproduces this warming, but they don't reproduce the the, the medieval warming period. To get the medieval warming period, it is necessary to increase greatly the solar effect by three, four, five times. So, this, so the models are uh, significantly overestimate, uh, overestimating the greenhouse gas uh, effect and uh, they are underestimating greatly the solar effect. So that is the only way to get uh, the medieval warming period. Okay? So this is a model, harmonic model uh, that I will talk to you, uh, you later. Please correct. Now let us discuss, start to discuss about this oscillation because uh, as, as I show you in the first uh, slides, uh, the temperature actually goes up and down with a big oscillation, which is about a 60 year oscillation. So there was a warming between 1850, 1880, then a cooling between 1880, uh, 1910, then a warming between 1910 and 1940, then a cooling, a little cooling between 1940 and uh, uh, 1970, then a warming again between 1970 and 2000, and then the temperature went a little bit uh, was stable. Actually, so it appears that there is a 60 year oscillation in the data, and indeed the 60 year oscillation in, is seen in several data. These are data uh, several centuries long. Uh, these are for the Indian monsoon that we see a very nice 60 year oscillation. This is from a reconstruction of the Pacific Decade Oscillation that goes to this. This is a reconstruction of the Atlantic Multic Decade Oscillation that goes like this, a 60 year oscillation. This is a sea level rise where it's possible to see 60 year oscillation also here. And uh, okay, so there are these oscillations uh, that last for several centuries. Please go ahead. So the problem is that uh, do we have an explanation of this oscillation? So uh, people say, okay, these oscillations are found in the ocean and so on, but we need to understand what is the origin of the oscillation. And this brought me to, to, uh, to study the, the planetary theory of climate and solar variation. This theory is indeed is quite uh, old. It was uh, introduced actually by Wolf uh, more than 150 years ago. And uh, here, uh, Wolf is the guy who have uh, essentially organized the sunspot record and therefore he uh, get this 11 year solar cycle. And uh, he uh, um, asked himself, what is the origin of this 11 year solar cycle? And he concluded that uh, the 11 year solar cycle could depend by the influence, combined the influence of four planets, Venus, Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn. So he uh, um, had this intuition, okay? He did not demonstrate anything, but he had this intuition that uh, oscillation in the sun could be somehow influenced by the only oscillator that we have, uh, that we have uh, in the solar system. So by the, the planets that go around the sun and create some kind of harmonic signals. Indeed, if we study the 11 year solar cycle, the, the data that I showed you before, we see that there is a peak in around 11 years, but then we have a side peak here and here. This is 11.86 here, this is the Jupiter orbital 
period. This is 9.98 years. So this is essentially the springtide harmonic between Jupiter and Saturn. So we have this kind of three peaks, where these two peaks, side peak, represent essentially planets. And so it seems that the 11 year solar cycle is modulated by these uh, effects by this uh, Jupiter Saturn. It is also possible to create a model by Venus, Earth, and Jupiter, which actually produce, is a tidal model, which actually, actually produce a 11 year solar cycle. So, this 11 year solar cycle, you see the black are the 11 year solar cycle, and the red is the model between Venus, Earth, and Jupiter. So, it's pretty much, pretty much reconstructed 11 year solar cycle. So, there are many ways to get this 11 year solar cycle in some, in some reason. By using just the first model, the one that used Jupiter, uh, uh, Jupiter, the three harmonics between Jupiter, Saturn, and then the 11 year solar harmonic, it is possible to demonstrate that uh, the combination of those three harmonics produce a very long millennial oscillation, which actually well uh, fits the millennial climate oscillation. The black line is the millennial climate oscillation. Okay? In addition, the same model produced this oscillation at about 100. 150 years and this oscillation if you look carefully at the data you see that the temperature went up in correspondence of this uh, predicted maxima uh, of solar activity uh, so you see that there is this condition and this is a zoom of this record the same model produced oscillation of 60 years this is 60 years 60 years 60 years 60 year, okay? So these are the 60 year oscillation that we see in the data, in the temperature data, okay? Now we are approaching this minima on solar activity around 2030, as also Roger showed you earlier, please. So that is one way to look at the things. Now let us study the wobbling of the sun. The wobbling of the sun is very important because it uh, summarizes all oscillations of the planets. Okay, it put together all oscillations of the planets. In particular, let us look at the distance or at the speed of this movement. Please go ahead. Go ahead. So if we study, the, uh, a, we do a spectral analysis, a continuous spectral analysis of the speed of the sun and the continuous spectral analysis of the global surface temperature, something very interesting happens. This is a 60 year cycle of the temperature and we see a peak in the speed of the sun. This is the 20 year cycle of the temperature and we see a peak in the speed of the sun. We see a, a, about 14 years cycle in the temperature and we see this 14 years cycle in the speed of the sun. We see this is the sunspot range, these are the uh, 11.86 and, and the 10 years essentially uh, tides between Jupiter and Saturn. And this is the signature of the 11 year solar cycle that is between these two because it is uh, modulated by these two cycles. Then we found the harmonic the here at 9 years which is actually lunar, lunar harmonic. And then the, 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 the planetary harmonic reappears, this 7.4, this is the harmonic here and the speed of the sun. We have this harmonic here that is here. We have this harmonic here, this harmonic here that is here and so on. So this picture shows you that there is a, a, a very strong coherence, spectral coherence between the speed of the sun that depends on the, on the planets of the solar system and the global surface temperature variation. So it's possible to put together with, our, with these harmonics. And this is a comparison between the IPCC model predictions, okay, with my models, this green curve is uh, just the harmonic signal made of uh, the 1,000 year oscillation, 115 year oscillation, 60 year oscillation, 20 year oscillation, uh, 10, years, 10, 12 year oscillation, 12, 9 year oscillation. You see, this is the model. And, and so we have this kind of behavior. According to this prediction, uh, the, the, uh, the model would produce uh, at most, by using the same, the same uh, emissions, will produce a temperature below the two degree, the two degree. So we are relatively safe, safe respect to this situation. So natural oscillation matter, go ahead please. This is a zoom of the same model. You see better this oscillation that reproduce very detailed oscillation in the temperature. Go ahead please. 
And this is uh, my prediction in 2011. So how is Cafeta 2011 model performing? Uh, my model produced in 2011 was uh, 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 published when the data were here, okay, were here. And then I produced this prediction, okay, at the time. And uh, these are the IPCC projection in green, okay, they went up and like this. Okay, so uh, you can, uh, you can, uh, uh, I don't want to answer this question because there might be some conflict of interest so uh, but uh, it seems uh, okay it seems that uh, my model is performing much better than the IPCC projection now I would like to use uh, another tell you another thing that is the last paper that will be published soon so what about uh, the longer cycle okay so we are talking about uh, up to 1000 years ago but there is another important cycle that is the 2300 400 year cycle that is known as the ALSAT ALSAT cycle ALSAT oscillation that is seen in C14 record very strongly. In this new paper, I show you that this uh, uh, cycle can be actually obtained by planetary harmonics in a very strong way. This is the oscillation of the planetary harmonics uh, that I will discuss uh, um, well, now, I don't have too much time, but just one minute, uh, I finish, one, two minutes. And uh, what is this? Uh, this is a uh, these are a, a wobbling, a study of the wobbling of the sun, essentially. This is the power spectrum of the sun. You see this ALSAT oscillation here. This curve are the theoretical stable resonances, orbital resonances generated by Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. You see this cycle here, that is the ALSAT cycle. You see this set of cycles, this is the Joseph cycles. This is, you see a cycle here, which is here, which has the Glazeberg cycle. You see the 60 year cycle here, that are here, here, and you see 60 year. Then there are these 20 year cycles, there are others. So all these cycles here that you find here that you find here are found in the climate or uh, solar records and these are the stable orbital resonances so what can we say in this way now I finish please uh, go ahead stop it yeah conclusion so uh, we have uh, this conclusion is that the climate has uh, important oscillation. These oscillations are characterized by specific harmonics, which are linked to planetary harmonics. And uh, the temperature will be kept uh, below two, two, two Celsius warming. Uh, uh, so there might be just uh, some adaptation policy to, to, to apply. And then uh, the last conclusion is this one. So this is what I believe that is happening. So there is periodic move in the planets of the solar system generates a set of stable resonances that uh, are well known by geophysicists and solar physicists because are found in climate and solar data. And these are all mechanisms that uh, suggest what is happening. So this set of resonances produce oscillation in solar, a solar wind uh, uh, oscillation, and then, and then this then creates uh, oscillation in cosmic ray, in dust, uh, in interplanetary dust density, and this creates climate change oscillation. So,